Yo, yo, it's Timmy Lee Glean. I'm coming at you with another one of these porch talks. And, um, you know, as the series winds up, you know, it's a boohoo. It's a sad thing. <laughs> Not really sad, you know. It's just, once again, I just want to just continue forth, you know, just in the mission that God truly wants me on. And I do believe that everything has a season everything has a time and there's a season for everything and when that season is up you know it's time for the next thing and um i'm getting to that point and uh you know i got a couple more topics to record i may be able to double up depending on how the sun is depending on if it rains but this is a topic i definitely want to get off my chest i'm extremely exhausted and tired but let me tell you the the spiritual exhaustion that I've had in this nation, um, the mental exhaustion that I had, you know, due to the effects of this nation and opening my eyes to the truth has truly messed me up. And it shows how much of the PTSD from slavery that I've experienced. Um, and yes, I've been delivered from those things now and I've overcome by the blood of the lamb. <laughs> Thank you, God. Um, but there's some things that grinds my gear still. And, you know, you can see the title already, so you know exactly what I'm going to talk about. That's why I don't need no big old intro and don't need, need any eloquent words. You know, this is one of the most controversial topics, I believe in the entire Christendom, in the entire, like, anybody that's doing biblical studies and scholars and, and the, the, the prophecy that is coming to life at this moment. And we always look at biblical prophecy and eschatology and the context of many of the prophets like Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and the minor prophets and things prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy and you know aspects of the book of Revelation and things said in there that can point you to the people groups and who's who you know but it's ultimately up to God revealing that revelation to you now I can tell you right now, there's many theologians that know way more about the Bible than me, that know way more about the history of it than me, that know many things, and even about God's supposed chosen people, they know that history. But when you truly get this revelation of who we are in America, that opens your eyes to a whole different world of looking at the Bible, especially like for us brown people. We we have it in our minds that Caesar Borgia is Jesus. And since Caesar Borgia is Jesus to us, many of us don't believe that the Messiah is actually a, a brown man. You know, we think Jesus is a European man with blue eyes and, and long flowy hair and, and just, you know, and regardless of who he is or whatever, we loved him regardless. It's crazy because I've seen individuals, like I've seen talk shows and this and that, and people that'll find out like, no, Jesus can't be black. Jesus can't be, and it's, it's not about being black or white. It's, it's, it's about tribes. And when we understand the context of tribes, I'm not here to prove nothing to you. I'm not here to give you research. I'm not here to throw anything at you. I'm not even here to prove nothing to you. I'm not here for that. I'm here to tell you research yourself. But when we look at the state of America, and when we look at biblical prophecy, 1948 did not fulfill the prophecy of God bringing his children back together. Because if God brought his children back together, they will be serving him right now. If God brought his children back together, this will be the end. God will be pleading with the nations. So, and that's a plot twist in the scriptures that can throw people off when you don't understand the context of what they're saying in Ezekiel, what they're saying in Isaiah, when you don't understand the context, you have to understand the people groups in the Bible because those same people groups exist today. So when I look at us in America, it makes the most sense. It, it, it says in Deuteronomy, I believe 28, 46, it says these will be a sign of who we are. 
This would be a sign. We go through the blessings and then we go through the curses. All the curses. And some things are things that happen in scripture. Like you can see what happened with the children of Israel and the tribe of Judah in scripture. But when we look at certain prophecies, like I forgot where it says. There's a couple places that says we will wake up in the land of our captivity. It's, it's somewhere in the Apocrypha, which we don't use. You know, <laughs> we will wake up in the land of our captivity. We will wake up there. There's, there's, there's places in the Apocrypha or a place in the Apocrypha that mentions that, you know, they will paint over paintings. They will name nations after themselves. <laughs> you know, and it's, and it's like. It's, it's, it's so many different aspects of prophecy that came about, I believe, not just the Apocrypha, but in the, in the prophets, you know, so. It's insane to see, you know, so once again, I'm not here to prove nothing to you, but, you know, just to paint a picture, then hope that you can understand, like, if you're watching this or not. Why go so hard to keep a group of people down like this? If we wrestle not against flesh and blood, why? In America specifically. Huh? We look at the Civil Rights Movement. Civil Rights Bill of 1865 that was denied by the Democratic Party. And then we go into... 1965 where it's finally passed but in order to pass the civil rights bill we have to include other groups of people and include their civil rights and with our civil rights now on top of that how about we place policies that now allows perversions to not be mental illnesses anymore so we can increase their civil rights oh look at that it's raining now well this ain't stopping it might get a little windy. I feel like this rain that's coming down right now is something that wants to stop this message. No, we're going to keep it going. So then we add rights to... Now we add rights to women. We give women rights. We give them public assistance and welfare and, and, and food stamps and... And all that stuff. And on top of that, you can't have no husband if you want this stuff. Then let's add drugs into the communities. Then let's add, what else into the community? Oh, let's redlining. Take your jobs away. Then let's add drugs and weapons to the community. Then let's get you culture that's flamboyant. That makes men switch around and wear flamboyant clothes. And how about we have hip-hop culture now? Which the style of hip-hop was taken. If you see the Jubilaires, search the Jubilaires. They're from like the 40s. That's where rap, I believe, started. And it probably was before then. There's a preacher, some gospel bars, but they took that and ran with that. Let's, let's, let's now create an atmosphere for hurt men to express themselves. And let's only exploit the ones that are in gang violence, that are, that are misogynistic, those that are disrespectful to women. Let's, let's exploit those. And so you see this... There's so many different aspects when you look at rap music with selling drugs and violence and, and, and killing and, and murder. And these are the frequencies that's going out. This is, af like, and think about this. This is after Jim Crow and this is after the Civil Rights Bill. The, <laughs> the dismantlement of the nuclear family structure. Because marriages in this country didn't start going down until our marriages went down. People actually follow us all around the world. You see cultural things that we start that are all around the world now. Once again, like I said in that last video, the inventions, all the things that we don't get credit for. It's insane to me. You know, so look at our churches now. Not ran by men, but Jezebel runs our churches. Jezebel. I don't care if there's a male pastor, Jezebel runs the church in the black community. Jezebel, why do you think there's no marriages? Why do you think there's so many single women in the churches? Why do you think there's no men being raised up? Because there's weak men being raised up. <laughs> there's so like, and if you're a Christian and black, black Christian, because there's so many of us now that have taken on a doctrine that will push us or refute us being 
God's chosen people. But regardless, Gentiles can be grafted in. I'm just here to tell you we not no Gentiles. We are the children of Israel. We are the tribe of Judah. That's who we are. We are Israelites. <laughs> now once again, I'm not here to prove nothing to you. I'm not here to throw Bible scriptures at you and all the research that I've done and anything. It's, it's just, it's at the point now where we have to look at prophecy for what it is. And like I said, certain prophecy don't line up according to those that are there right now in, in, in the promised land. Prophecy do not line up. But we worship them and we giving them all this money. And y'all don't understand. Y'all y'all trodden over the, the, the blood, sweat, and tears of the slave labor. That's been going on here. And the whole world got rich off of the slave labor. Just for our people to struggle. Man, it ain't about getting no handouts. It ain't about, hey, give me, give me, give me resources, money, and things like that. We should be unifying. We should be working together. But when you got a whole system... That's against a group of people to the point when we build up prosperous communities, they come in, infiltrate, and destroy. That's what happened when our, like, Oklahoma, boom, our Black Wall Street, boom, blew it up. Other prosperous black communities, boom, attacked. Just must try it. Once we try to get together, we have other movements and other people, politicians, other people infiltrating our churches, infiltrating our movements, trying to give us dollars, but say, hey, we can't talk about this or that, that, but we got to promote this, that, 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 and this. Taking over our movements, taking over our everything. I guarantee you, if our community was in a better place with the Most High, I guarantee you the rest of this nation will be in a better place as a whole. I guarantee you. Just imagine if it was less of us out here killing each other. Imagine if it was less of us out here selling drugs to people in our own community. Imagine if it was less of, imagine if it was less of us having our children out of wedlock. Imagine if it was less of us. Woman, like womanizing our women and, and destroying our women and dehumanizing our children. Imagine if it was less of us that's out here living hot girl summers. Imagine if it was less of us on that. Best believe the rest of this nation will not be crumbling the way that it's crumbling. And I'm not going to blame it on a group of people. I'm going to point it out. God is allowing this for a reason. To show us. Like, we continue to go to politicians. We continue to try to go to the government. We continue to try to go to this and that and that and this and to music artists and the entertainment and we go to soothsayers and we go to psychics and all this stuff. We we trying to find we trying to find a way. But <laughs> we ain't real lies. <laughs> the catalyst of our liberation is in the most high God. In the moment that we get back to our God. The God, the creator of all things, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The moment that we get back to his law, statutes, and commandments, and by the Spirit. I'm not, so the, but as long, once we get back to his laws, statutes, and commandments, once we get back to his ways, to, to his governance, and to his government, and to his way of operating, and his morals, and his principles, and his values. Once we get back to that, that's when we're going to see a change in our community for real. We've been crying out 60 years. Trying to become one with everybody. Trying to unify with everybody. Instead of being with our God. We are the children of Israel. And once we walk with our God. Those who unify with us. Are those that are grafted into Israel. And that's the issue. If we don't know who we are. We're not going to be able to walk in it. Why do you think there's guys out there right now that consider black Hebrew Israelites which are zealous to speak to our community? Because you don't see no other Christians out there speak. You don't see no Christians on the east side speaking to our community. You don't see them out there like that. And I'm not saying there ain't any. And I'm just talking about this is in Buffalo. But there's other communities, black communities all around the nation. And yeah, there may be some Christians, some good Christians that's out there. I'm a Christian, you know, so... But the ones that are out in the trenches the most are the black Hebrew Israelites. And they going out there because they want us to know who we are. Because the moment we know who we are, then we start truly crying out to God. Just like they did in, in, when they were in Egyptian captivity or any time. 
We can go through even after the Egyptian captivity and in, in, the, in the days of the judges. And they went to multiple captivities and they had to cry out to God. Like they got tired. They cried out to God. God freed them. And then they went back because of wickedness and they cried out to God and God freed them. And this is the same thing. But this is the most harsh captivity that we've dealt with. This is Bible prophecy. These things have truly happened back then and it's happening now. And... So when I hear somebody like a black person say, oh, man, the Bible, that's a slave religion. That's 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 a white man's religion. When the Bible ain't even a white man's book. Why do you think there's no history on our people going to war? You got all these Egyptian wars. You got, I mean, not Egyptian wars. You got all these European wars with Europeans. You even got aspects of showing wars with Africa and then all, but they don't even got major African wars, but they don't show our wars. Why don't they show our wars in the history books? Because our wars in the history books included the creator of everything. Our history is in the Bible. Now I'm not one to, like, <laughs> you know, once again, I'm not one to throw what I think on people or force anything on anybody. This is why I always tell anybody, research. Do your research. But I, I, I know, like, that rain came down to try to get me to stop. <laughs> it tried to get me to stop doing this. But it's just like, nah, this is something that, that needs to be spoken because... We need to understand the context of our struggle here in America. We got to understand why we're here in America. It, it says in Deuteronomy 28, 68, and many people would say, oh, that don't, that don't, that don't, that don't, that don't. no, no. He says, I will bring you back in Egypt in ships where no one will, <laughs> no one will, will, will buy you. Like, meaning like when we were sold into Egypt or basically... Egypt is bondage, house of bondage. This is a house of bondage for us. And it says no man will, 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 will buy us. Meaning nobody will take us. Once we got here, nobody was going to take us from here. Nobody was going to purchase us from here. We've been here ever since. We've been here ever since. 1619, we still here. Wondering why, why can't we be treated like humans? Wondering why cops is murdering us in cold blood in these streets. Wondering why all of our entertainment and all the people that's speaking for our community that's on a major level are in, 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 and not to judge anybody for their sinful lives. But this is what we got. We got Cardi B to the White House speaking for us and representing us. We got Cardi B representing us. <laughs> you know, we, we need wholesome people out here representing us, but they don't want that. Why do you think they're not signing people that are actually talented? It's sad. The most talented people are the people that's not getting signed. That's not getting no notoriety. If you're speaking about something positive, you're not going to make it out here in this world, in this industry. You're not. You're not going to make it being positive. You're not going to make it trying to uplift your community. You try to uplift your community, you're going to get assassinated. <laughs> Cointel Pro. Why is there a Cointel Pro? We don't know nothing. Why don't we know nothing? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And, and, and of course Christians could use that scripture to apply a principle which is true. Which us as Christians as a whole do have a lack of knowledge on scripture. But when it says my people, we're talking about God's chosen people. When we look at the Old Testament, a lot of that was speaking to God's chosen people. The children of Israel. In the, in the tribe of Judah. That's, that's who that was speaking to specifically. Like All that stuff was speaking to them specifically. This ain't no replacement theology. And in those that even believe in the concept of replacement theology and can acknowledge that, okay, these promises are to Israel. And then whoever is grafted in are included in the promises. Their perception on who Israel is is off. And once again, I'm not here to debate nobody. I'm not here to try to line up scripture and do this and that. God has given me this revelation. And sometimes I had moments where I thought I heard from God, but I didn't. 
I had moments like that. And I had moments I, I heard from God and I'm very sure. Many Christians become Hebrew Israelites. I was not no Christian. I walked into this thing knowing who I was and I became a Christian. This is very odd. And this is, <laughs> this is very odd compared to the, the greater whole of those that are Israelites. I don't believe in any false doctrine that the Gentiles cannot be grafted into the promises of Israel. I just believe that we are those original branches. We're not grafted in. I'm not a Gentile. And if you are one of these that are in America, you're not a Gentile. And there'll come a point in time where, just like in Egypt, we are old something. We're, we're old. And not to say that in an entitlement way. I'm not saying that out of entitlement. I'm saying that out of principle. Every single group that was ever enslaved because there were more than just us being enslaved in America. There were different groups, people being enslaved, including many various European groups. Uh, groups all over the, 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 the world. There's been enslavement everywhere. But think about every group that was enslaved. Everybody has their own country. Everybody has their own banking system in their countries. Everybody has their own financial structure, yes. Everybody has their own army. Everybody has their own land that they can call their own. They have their own government and they have their own people in that place. This country, I do not feel like I'm at home here. Now this is considered home because, I mean, I was born here. <laughs> From ancestors brought against their will. <laughs> I was born here, you know. Many could say, oh, you're lucky for being here. You're lucky. You know, you're blessed for being here. You could be out over. I'd rather, like, I would take living somewhere else. And I don't mean moving from here to somewhere else. No, I mean, if I was born somewhere else and I had identity of who I am and, and had my own people and had family, like, it, it just. I would prefer that over living in a place where I have to look around at pain all the time. Where I can't even trust my own people. Where my own people treat me worse than any other human being. I had no context of being 10, 11 years old, being treated the worst by my own people. I had no context. I had no context where I can be, where I can withhold, not withhold, but I can hold qualities of the most high God. And this is for, this is for like boys and girls. When you're super kind, when you're gentle, when you're meek, when, when, when you're patient, when, when, when you're loving, when, when you're certain things, there's certain people that are going to come against you. And it seems like it's a higher level of attack in our community to the people that are more Christ-like. There is. And not to say like if you're not walking with Christ, you don't deal with persecution or things like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a, there's a higher level, I believe, of being a brown person in this country trying to live right <laughs> you try to live right you try to live for the most high you're gonna get shunned you're gonna get this you're gonna get that people gonna talk about you you just just like i said they used our women to empower the feminist movement and now the feminist movement it turned into womanism and it's turned into radical hatred for men and got babies with them but we hate the men and then there's men out here that hate the women. <laughs> and it's this cycle of men hate women, women hate men. And it, it, it's this back and forth thing. Why do we hate each other so much? Why do we hate our children so much? Seventy-five percent of our children are, are, are born out of wedlock. That is an astronomical number compared to everybody else. Why us? Why can't we get married and stay married? No fault divorce now made it where you can just divorce for any reason. Our women now are <laughs> the first to divorce, but the last to get married. Why? Why is that just the, just the average, the average age of marriage back then was like 20, 21. Now it's like 30. 
past 30 now for men. 30. <laughs> you feel me? And now men, when, when men hit 30, they hitting their prime. Like, no, you want to be with somebody through your 20s, through them struggling days, and then reach your prime when you marry. <laughs> you know, like, it's like now you... We had this culture and we got a lot of these women out here that's in the entertainment business and industry that tells you like, hey, like, I need a man with a bag. I need a man with this. I need a man with that. So now you, you borderline just got to sell drugs or <laughs> you, <laughs> like, you just got to sell drugs. Like, I don't know. Nobody going to start no business and just jump to six figures like that. Nobody gonna have no op like it. It don't just happen. This this happens, and, and a lot of like a lot of men became successful and had things to pass down because they had a solid wife at home. It ain't two people making money together because that's taken away from your legacy to children. No, it was a man doing what he needed to do for his family, and the woman was home taking care of the children and also supporting her husband. Nothing against two people that work. I'm not saying that. If you got a dynamic that works, you got grandparents that work with you, babysitting or whatever arrangement you got, it works. But what I'm saying is how it was and, and, and how men became successful is by having a strong force of a woman behind him to help him. And it ain't about, oh, what about my dreams? What about what I want to do? What about what? You know, it, it ain't about that. It, it it's It's... It's, it's become a very selfish mentality that we have. And then now on the other end, now we got lots of men as well that living with women. They living with them. And let me tell you, I was one of them. I moved in with somebody else. I live with them. You think you can live with somebody and they name on the house and, and, and any moment she say, like, get out of my house, you know? <laughs> men don't do that. <laughs> Any crazy argument, get out my house. <laughs> they can be in the wrong. Get out my house. And you gotta, you, you gotta submit. You know how that feels to be a man to submit. That's what our men gotta do. You know how it feels to be to be a black man. To know that we have a slave master that if we say anything that they can strip us of everything, but also that we have a woman if we say anything now we demonize by our woman. We can't, we can't, we, we are in a place where we're just like, what can we do? What can we say? We can't say nothing in our churches. Because the moment you say something in the church, oh no, oh, oh, we can't judge me. Because we, what if you have a standard of holiness? And we not living to that standard as a whole. Because our churches is one of the big problems too in, this, in, in our communities. And I believe a big thing is that we don't have context on who we are. Because if we had context of who we are, we would take God's law more seriously. And I mean, oh, the law is doing away with. No, I'm not talking about no law, sin, and death. I'm talking about the law of the Spirit. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and moved by the Holy Spirit, you're going to be moved to do what God wants. And God don't want what's out here right now. God don't want that. God don't want us to be single parents all the time. God don't want your children to grow up and, and have children out of way. Like God don't want your men to grow up and be dependent on a woman. God don't want your men to grow up, the, the men to grow up and not be able to have work ethic. To not be able to work for what they need. As the scripture says, it says if you don't work, you don't eat. I've never seen so many men not willing to work. We smoking weed and playing 2K. And a woman out working. And wondering why she coming home frustrated at you. That the dishes ain't washed. <laughs> that the laundry ain't done. That the, that the floor ain't vacuumed. Because you want to know why you traded places. The moment that you allowed her to go out and work. And you stay in that home. You need to do that home stuff. That's you. So now she's coming home belittling you. And it's a part of that masculine nature in you that do not like that. I was there. I didn't like it. <laughs> you know what I did? I got up and got myself a good job. That's what I did. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, uh-uh. I need to work, man. I need to get my own place. <laughs> Everybody ain't like me. Was, man, I ain't taking that. 
You know, because you get to a point, you take some of it, but it gets to a point you hit that, that, that breaking point, you know, and I've been a beta male my whole life. I've been effeminate, you know, with a lot of my movements and how I was. And effeminate don't mean homosexual or like anything like that. Effeminate just means that your mindset is geared towards and how you move is more so geared as a woman, as a man. And meaning you move off of emotions and feelings than logic and reason. And there's lots of men that's moving off of emotions and feelings. And when you move off of emotions and feelings, that'll move you to get mad at somebody for nothing. Over a 2K game, over a girl, over anything. And you will murder somebody over that. We are cursed. God will gather us from the places that we've been scattered. We have been scattered. We didn't scatter ourselves on our private jets and our riches that we got. First class commercial plane to this country and that country and that country. It says we will be scattered. We were scattered. And there's circumstances that scattered our people. There's tribes out there that are lost, and now they're trying to say that there are countries in Europe, like random countries in Europe, like Germany and this and that and that. And they're saying those are lost tribes. Them lost tribes are up in Africa. Some probably in the Middle East. Some probably are scattered in other places in Europe and things like that, but they're scattered. This ain't people groups all together. And <laughs> like, only place we see that in is probably Africa. Africa is probably the only place, or probably, probably in many of the Caribbeans and also the South Americas, I believe, where there are groups of the tribes together, and a lot of them probably don't even know that they are the lost tribes. A lot of them probably do, and probably know a lot more than we know about ourselves. But all I know is when I look at the what the tribe of Judah is gonna go through, I I, I clearly see it in America. I see it for us. And like I said, a lot of people don't see it. But when we look at history, our history in this country, when you look at babies being bashed up against walls, when you look at babies being used as gator bait, when, when, when we go through buck breaking and we take the strongest, most eloquent, well-spoken man or strongest person in the group and have him raped in front of women and children and then hung to death. <laughs> And, and all of the other cruel like torture and torment that people going through and we going to say that this is a Christian nation. <laughs> I believe it's Christians in this nation. That's what I believe. This ain't no Christian nation. This nation was built on blood. This nation was built on evil, wicked people and wicked hearts. And, and, and for people to even allow the treatment in those beginning days, I, I, I can't. I can't get jiggy with it. These holidays just feel different. To, it's crazy. Yo, these holidays feel so different to me. Like, these last couple years, holidays, I, I'm, I'm not rocking with it. I'm not rocking with Easter. I'm not rocking with Christmas. I'm not rocking with the 4th of July, Independence Day. I'm not rocking with none of these holidays. This stuff in this country has nothing to do with our people. We are a big part of the history of this place. And I do believe that those that, you know, we have conservative people that are part of the black community. They're conservative. You know, and they believe in Christian values. They believe in living righteous according to the Most High. I believe there's many that believe in those things. I believe there's people on the left wing that kind of believes, but when you side with anybody that don't believe that life has a chance or... You know, we we say, well, that's their body and their choice. And that's, no, what is your stance on it? Because I'm going to tell you my stance on abortion right now. It's not right. It's murder. Now, I'm not going to say, hey, who, who doesn't? I'm, I'm just not going to say what it is. I'm not going to go, oh, they're just a clump of cells. No, it's murder. Think about this. My child, eight years old. My oldest child, eight years old. She ain't done developing. She ain't done growing. Will killing her right now be the same as <laughs> killing in the womb? Yes. 
<laughs> yes, it'll be the same exact thing. Killing a, a five, six, seven year old that's not done growing. <laughs> yes. To abort just means to cut off, cancel, to stop. That's what that is. We can call it whatever it is, but you're stopping life from growing. You're stopping life from proceeding. You're stopping life, but it's life. The moment that like, all right, I have life in me right now. One day I'll get a wife and boom, magic will happen. And in the midst of that magic, there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of life that is going to come from me because life is in me and it's going to go into an egg. One of one of those millions and millions of life is going to go into that egg. So one of these life that's in me right now, one, one of these are going to go into a woman. Just one of the millions. I have life in me right now. There's life in me right now. Legit life. This is why I tell you about semen retention. Because there's life in it. And if you hold it in, what? It does something to you. Now, if you're with a woman and you're, you're going to do what you do. This is more so a maiden call for a wife, in a sense. It's also keep you productive while you're single. <laughs> And not wasting your time with any woman so you can focus on what you need to. And then if somebody comes along to help you in that purpose that God has given for you, bam. You know? We're part of an over-sexualized culture where we, we can't even get to know each other. We're the most sexualized group of people on the earth. On earth. Us. We be popping out babies left and right. Bam, bam, bam. I pop three in a row. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we pop babies. Now, imagine if all those babies grew up in righteousness. Because it says be fruitful and multiply. We multiplying, but we not fruitful. <clears throat> so, the best that I can do is raise my children the best that I can. And I believe that there's others raising children the best that they can do. You know, I'm not one to say, hey, like, you know. Don't be with them because they're a different race of color and this, this, that. I believe whatever God's will is God's will. And I believe that God has allowed Israelites, you know, like, if you see in those back in the days of the laws, when he said, like, stay with your people, you know. But when, when I look at it now, we have to look at being equally yoked. And being equally yoked is deeper than just the same race of people. What do you believe in? What, what, what doctrine do you, do you follow? And, 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 and what do you truly live by and what do you abide by and is this person does this person align with that line up with that like can they follow that as well but i believe it is some weird fetish thing and i mean in the world i don't mean with christians i just mean in the world it is this weird fetish thing with interracial marriage and dating and not to say everybody because i never want to throw anybody in a box <clears throat> but from what i've been seeing from what I've been noticing and the clarity that I've gained and the revelation that I've received, it's a lot of wickedness going on, you know, just we've seen so many cases where it's just like a man will be with women and it's like, oh, like she'll get caught and say, oh, he raped me. Oh, he did this to me. He did. They might blurt that out. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, and but the person didn't do it. They were just black. And they were <laughs> This is some of the hardest stuff you gotta talk about because when 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 you when you cross a line, especially as a black man, this is when you truly cross the line of offense, especially me just acknowledging that I'm an Israelite now and understanding why we got things coming to us. When we look at the the plight of our movements and who have been the biggest hindrance in our movements who have been the biggest hindrance in everything. It all boils down to Margaret Sanger and anybody that aligns with Margaret Sanger. If you don't know Margaret Sanger, she was a woman that founded Planned Parenthood. She didn't like black people. She was a racist. She was in cahoots with the KKK. And this is who Hillary Clinton said that she looks up to. Yet we, we, we wanna follow Hillary Clinton which believes in this racist KKK woman. 
And it's sad because, and like I said, this is the part that gets uncomfortable with being in America and being a man and having a voice and that can step on people's toes. Because at the end of the day, we could talk about all the white men. They talk about it all the time. Women. <laughs> I see women talk about it all the time. Like white men being the oppressors. White men being evil. White men. They, they, it, they say it all the time. When I'm looking, I, I know so many cool white boys. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> yeah, there are. There are some people that are in power, that are racist, that hate black people, that don't like black people. You know, just just in this neighborhood, I live in a gentrified neighborhood. It's, it's, it's points where I, where, where I used to walk down the street and I'm walking down the street and while I'm walking, it'd be some people walking towards me and they'll cross the street walking towards me. They'll cross the street. They won't walk past me. And I'm one of the kindest people you ever meet. Hello, how you doing? Like, I'm really a kind person. I'm inviting. But just because of the color of my skin, somebody will cross the street. You think that's a home? You think, you think you'll feel at home walking at a place where somebody will walk across the street in the same direction? Wouldn't we, if we live in the same neighborhood, the same community, wouldn't you want to feel like a neighbor? I don't feel like a neighbor to everybody out here. And I know some people probably hear me right now. I, I believe people get my heart. You know, I truly had the love of Christ and I love, I literally love every single living, breathing human being. Even the ones that love me. I mean, even the ones that hate me. I love, I love those that hate me. I love you. You hate me, I love you. Because <laughs> what, what's, what's add more hate to haters going to do? Well, you know, I love you. <laughs> you know, but it really just... But when you cross the realm, like you can talk about all the white men all you want. White men begin abused in the media <laughs> and just like. But when you talk about white women and, and no offense to nobody, I'm not trying to offend nobody. But we act like they wasn't the wives of those slave masters. We act like they weren't the wives of those members in the KKK. We act like they weren't the wives of the people that were hanging people. We act like they wasn't the one that was molesting the male slaves. And then when they were getting pregnant by those male slaves, those mulatto children were getting beaten. And those mulatto children was getting murdered and cut out the stump and just... So we, we can't sweep nothing under the rug. There's been wickedness done to our people <laughs> at a level that we haven't seen in humanity. We still in the middle of our Holocaust. It's still stuff going on today. This is a place that we built and look at us and look how we treat it. All of the rights, all of the civil rights go into everybody. Besides us, even foreigners are coming into this country with more civil rights than us. That should say something to you. Foreigners are coming in and getting more stuff than us. And it ain't the fact that we are lazy people. It's a fact that we can't ever get a break. You know what I say? Leave us alone. <laughs> I'm serious. Leave us alone and let us figure it out. And best believe we're going to get it together. Because the moment we start to figure it out and get it together, it seems like somebody always want to, huh. You ever notice? If, It'd be too many, like, it'd be too many black people together. Somebody got to come in the middle of it. Huh, what y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all conspiring? What y'all doing? It, like, it ha look. <laughs> you know you see it. <laughs> Let it be three, four of us. It's like, I remember how it used to be, like, at work. You know what I'm saying? Just, it was like 12 of us at my old job. Everybody else was other things. It was like 12 black people at my old job. Let three of us get together in a group. It's like, oh, hold on, what they talking about? It's like, <laughs> like we playing a world domination. But we literally some of the most peaceful people in this world. We have been pushed into being violent people. We have been given this nature from our slave masters. This violent nature has come from slave masters. We were peaceful. We are still graceful and we are still forgiving in a way that no other human being is forgiven. You got, you got countries still, countries and lands, they, they fighting with each other still. Got North Korea, South Korea. 
And they stuff be over some petty stuff from thousands of years ago. We forgiven recent stuff. <laughs> we forgiven so much. That should tell you who we are, how forgiving we are. We love everybody else more than ourselves. We don't love our own people. Not more than other groups of people. And I don't mean you as an individual. If you as an individual is an individual that love your people, yes, that's awesome. I'm not picking and choosing favoritism right now in this dialogue or talk. But what I'm telling you is, there's a group of people experiencing things that is oddly paralleling the book of Exodus and also aligned with the curses in Deuteronomy. Also aligned with many of the prophetic things that has been stated in Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. And for the simple fact that so many people are now trying to demonize anybody that believes they're an Israelite in America because of our eyes being open to what we deal with in this country, then that, that's just, that, it all says so much. But it said we will wake up when we are waking up. And regardless if I'm an Israelite or not, my salvation isn't in my skin color. My salvation is in what Christ has done on the cross. That's where my salvation lies. So I'm not coming to you and don't ever accuse me of, of, of uh, don't, don't do that. Don't accuse me of thinking that because of my skin color, I hate people. Because I can't stand, because that happened to me before. I can't stand when you try to include me into something that I'm not even a part of. I'm not a part of no camp. I'm not a part of no false doctrine. I'm not a part of none of that. I believe that I am from the tribe of Judah. I'm, I'm one of the children of Israel, according to the Bible, according to scripture, according to prophecy, according to the curses, which in Deuteronomy 28, 2846, it says these will be a sign. So I'm taking these things as a sign. Abraham had that dream and in and, and, and Genesis 15, 13, we, we see the, the proof in what's happening with our people. So when I'm looking at our people, I look at our people with compassion. I had a heart and care for lost souls of all people, but now I care about my people. And not to say I care about my people more than other people, but this is the children of Israel. It said to the Jew first, then to the Gentiles. We just bypass them. We bypassed our people. I look on the east side of my city, it is desolate in the spirit over there. It is desolate on the east side of my city. And I bet that you can go to the, the black community in your city, whatever city you in, whatever city you live in, drive around the black community in your city and look at how much death you feel in the spirit. And I mean those that are spiritually inclined and spiritually aware. I don't mean you that think with the carnal mind. I mean if you are spiritually aware and spiritually inclined, look at the communities in your city. Whatever city you from, all the way from the west coast to the east coast. And some of the best unity that we're going to see is down south. Why? Because that's where the slaves were. They, they, they were forced to have unity. Up here, we uppity in the north. We, 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 we better than, we feel like we better than people in the north. We better than each other. The south, that's why they got southern hospitality. Because, yeah, southern slaves and, and northern black people are psychologically geared different. Southern racism and northern racism are two different things. Southern racism, a lot of it is Confederate flag straight out. <laughs> you know, they, they're, they're, they're straightforward and outward with their racism and they'll call it what it is, but they'll say, hey, like, I don't want my children to be with your children. I don't want my children to go to school with your children. I don't want that. And a lot of them don't even say, like, hey, don't be in this country. They just say, ah, hey, you stay over there, I'll stay over here. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy, like, here is weird, man. It, it's weird in the north, and that's why I feel like, especially, like, New York State is literally that in California. But on the east coast, I would say not, not even east coast. This is the worst state in the whole entire country to live in. New York State is the worst state in the entire country. This is the worst state in the country. I'm telling you. 
And there's a lot of bad cities. There's a lot of bad cities. Buffalo, New York is one of the worst cities for black people to live in in the United States of America. Especially if you're awake. Not to say there's no opportunity, not to say there's no anything, but when we look at our city compared to other cities, think like we're considered a major city. So I'm not talking about little hick towns and little towns and small towns and things like that, because I'm pretty sure there's worse conditions in, in those towns. It might be third third world country towns and things, but there's not a large population of people in those. There's a large population of people in the city of Buffalo as a whole. There's issues here that people in the South don't deal with. There's issues here with people in other states don't live in. There's so many issues here in this country. It's wicked. So when I look at our people as a whole, when I look at, you know, once again, this is just me getting stuff off my chest. This ain't me trying to prove nothing to you. This ain't me trying to throw nothing at you. You know, I don't even care to do a Bible study on this anymore. I don't care. This is literally porch therapy sessions, right? <laughs> so I'm just getting as much off of my chest as possible. And then I'm moving on. I got two more topics. I'm done with this series. I'm done with it. I don't need to talk about me being God's chosen people anymore. That's why I don't do it. Unless it's context. And of course, I'm going to speak. I'm going to tell people who, like, if, if I'm speaking to somebody about biblical matters, I'm going to tell them who, but I ain't leading with that. I ain't leading with that. But at the same time, our community needs to know who they are. Because we're not going to have a sense of pride to walk with the Most High <laughs> if we don't know who we are. The reason why I take this so serious is because of how I walked into this. Now, of course, I learned the gospel, the Great Commission, and, and all that, you know. So, that was the icing on the cake. But when I learned about just the things that God has done in the beginning, just the, the, the signs and wonders, and then Him bringing forth the law, statutes, and commandments to His chosen people, and just going through those law, statutes, and commandments, and looking through them, and reading them, and realizing, wow, these are things that we already, this is common sense stuff. Like just looking through the law and we could we talk about the law all day and just even even the feasts and the festivals and, and things like that. And you want to celebrate them and people say, well, we're not under that law, so we don't have to celebrate it. So let's just celebrate Christmas and Easter. You know, it, it, it's sad. No, there's no sacrificial laws anymore because we have our sacrifice in Christ. We don't need that. But regardless of that, man, it, it's profitable, man. It's profitable. It is. You know, so. I will hope, truly, I will hope that, because I've been out here for a while now. It's been 53 minutes. I ain't mean to be out here that long. But I really I really wanted to just get this off of my mind. And, and, and Man, I don't know. Once I woke up to this truth, man, I spoke to the Most High about it. <laughs> This is revelation given to me by the Most High. And some people, Christians even, they'll say, oh, that you ain't hear the Most High say that, you know, because the Most High, like, you know, it's just, I know. But like I said, I don't know everything. I'll tell you, I admit, I know nothing, actually. I really don't know nothing. But I'm very sure when God speaks to me. Sometimes I thought that God spoke to me and he didn't. No, this has been... This has been about four years now, over four years, and my mind ain't, ain't changed about this. And this has been me walking away from studying Hebrew Israelitism. This is me walking away from, not the scriptures, but I wanted to learn how the, how the church operated. I wanted to learn more about Christ. So I was in the New Testament more. I was in, I was, I was in the epistles, studying the epistles. And just, just allowing those things to seep in my spirit and how the character qualities, the characteristics, the fruits of the spirit, operating by the law of the spirit. But if I didn't get context from the Torah, if I didn't get context from God's law, statutes, and commandments, if I didn't get that foundation, you know, from, from, from the beginning, I wouldn't be walking with Christ the way that I walk with Christ today. 
where I don't I don't want to just live any old way. I know I made my mistakes. I stumbled. You know, people that, you know, many people that come into this truth through the law, you know, we try to walk so perfect and so upright and so this and that and this and that. And we're doing it in our flesh and we're not trusting in the spirit that the Most High has given us to operate and move by His spirit. Because when we're following the law of the spirit, that means we moved to do what God wants us to do by God and not by our own selves. Because we can't really do none of this stuff in and of ourselves. That's why we needed Jesus to die for us. This is why we needed him to fulfill the law, statutes, and commandments. All 613, I believe, down to a T. And once he died, our righteousness is in him. And if he is living through us in that spirit, that raised him, raised him up from the dead, if that lives in us, then we are moved into deeper levels of Christ likeness. And Christ fulfilling the law and following the law, it'll move us to do the law of the spirit of God. <laughs> and it's, so we can get into realms of legalism and this and that and that and this and, and just, you can accuse me of being a legalistic because I believe in holiness. You can accuse me of being a Pharisee because I believe that we should be moved by God's laws. That we should be following God's laws. That we should be governed by God's laws. That we are a part of a kingdom not built with hands. In any government that you are a part of, you abide by laws. And many of us Christians are breaking God's laws. That's because we don't understand the context of Israel and the covenant with Israel. And the new covenant is through Jesus Christ and that blood that was shed. And through that new covenant, Gentiles are grafted into the nation of Israel. So those Gentiles that are grafted in, they are Israelites. <laughs> Truly. You know, you're a Gentile by blood, but you're an Israelite in the spirit. Just like there's Israelites by blood, but Gentiles in the spirit. You know? But, ultimately, I come to you with the love of Christ. Yahushua HaMashiach. I come to you with the love of our Messiah. The, 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 the Savior of our souls. The, the Father God. The one that has redeemed us through the blood of His only begotten Son. The one that has redeemed His children. We are sons and daughters of God because of what he's done on the cross. God has walked this earth through Jesus Christ and died. Through Jesus Christ, of course. <laughs> and was risen. <laughs> There's many people say, oh, well, God can't die. God can't because Jesus was a human flesh clothed in human flesh God just needed a vessel a pure vessel to come in this earth through and he needed to do that through a virgin a woman that hasn't been defiled but that's not a man's seed like me of my father Jesus is the only person that came into the world in that way and that's why he's considered not only the son of God, but God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. God is operated in this earth as signs, wonders, and miracles through Jesus Christ. And through that sacrifice, the Holy Spirit has come down on all men now. And we all can do greater than him. We all can heal the sick, the blind, the lame, the, the whatever. We can do all that, casting out demons, stumping over principalities, but we got to walk in that power. And we're not going to walk in that power if we don't even know who we are. And those don't, that don't even know who we are, they could be walking in that power. So I'm not saying those that don't know who you are, that consider yourself like, no, because I've seen the evidence of people walking in power. That don't know who they are. But what I'm telling you is. We as a nation of people. Can walk, walk in those ways of the most high. And we as a nation of people. If we do so. You know how, how much we can flip and turn things upside down for the kingdom. Of course glory to God. Because we can't do it in and of ourselves. But. And this ain't just about. Excuse me. Black people sticking together. Black people this. Because if you think of how compartmentalize we are if that's the correct word we can't unify it's impossible it's impossible for us to unify with all these different philosophies beliefs 
groups, factions, and, and, and so many different value systems and morals. It, 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 it's so many ways this country has decimated our people and split us apart in so many different ways through politics and through culture, through entertainment, through people groups, through organizations. All these things have split us apart so bad that we cannot unify. And the only way we're going to be able to unify is if we know who we are and we walk with our God. That's it. Because I see Christians all around the nation, all around the world. I see them all coming together, bam, bam, this and that. I look at our community, it is messed up. And nobody coming to our community. They don't want to come. The only people that's really coming out there are the black Hebrew Israelites. And then we want to shun them and shame them for going out and then and just, do y'all know what they feel? And we don't have Christ-like love for them, then what? Then what? Because the black Hebrew Israelites get different treatment than everybody else. Than everybody else. Anybody else that's in a cult or anybody else that's in false doctrine, the black Hebrew Israelites get some of the worst treatment. They're considered uh, hate groups now. And <laughs> they're putting them in militia level hate groups now. Like this is what they're doing. For just going out there and telling people who they are. And yes, is it radical to tell people they're going to hell for what skin color they are? Is that considered hate? And a group of people that does that, that would be considered, I guess, a hate group. But at the same time, you got to understand the context of why they out there. Why they out there preaching the gospel or doing the best to preach the gospel or their gospel, the, 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 the black man gospel. But regardless, they are being used by the Most High to wake us up. We just need more people walking in the ways of Christ. But know who we are Because we can be Christians And still acknowledge the fact that we are Israelites We, we, we can have a Christian foundation as Israelites We can have identity in who we are And following the ways of God And consider ourselves Christians We can do that And if we're walking righteous in these ways Others going to see it. Others, we going to see the Gentiles want to come, come and join the nation of Israel and be grafted into the nation of Israel. Because that's, that's, the nation of Israel is not over there in the land of Israel. The nation of Israel are those that are walking in the ways of the Most High God. Point blank period. So we can say who the true Israelites are or who not the true Israelites because I believe many Gentiles are more Israelite than Israelites. And I believe many Israelites are more Gentile than Israelite. I mean, more Gentile than Gentiles. This whole nation is flipped upside down. And it's flipped upside down because of the treatment, the injustices against God's chosen people. And if you don't understand that and can acknowledge the injustices of God's chosen people, but continue to go through the skewed history, the skewed version of history and slavery and, and, and the Jim Crow laws and the, and the fire hoses being literally just 60 years ago, just seeing what Martin Luther King and them been through for peaceful protesting. They ain't even go out with violence. They went out peacefully and still had violence implemented on them. And you don't think that we are them people? That should be enough of a sign right there. How peaceful and loving and kind and gentle of a people that we are to be in the face of that and still deal with what we dealt with. Because that, but it ain't in our nature to be walked all over. It's in our nature to trust our God in whatever fight. And the more of us that's walking with God and trusting in God, watch what God does. God will protect us. God will be with us. God is our strong and tall tower. He told Joshua, he said, you go forth and don't be dismayed and don't be worried for I will be with you. And I know I'm paraphrasing right now. They walked, across, they walked around the walls of Jericho. Seven times and then the wall came down. God has brought an entire wall down. Just imagine walking around the Great Wall of China and then the whole entire Great Wall of China collapses. That's the power of our God. The creator of this, 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 this tree behind me, this grass, humans, the, the human design, the, the, the heavens and the earth went to war with us. This is why you can have 300 people go to war against the whole entire army and be victorious. Yeah, that 300 movie? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't tell you that they Israelites. 
300 people. That's a true story. <laughs> but when you white out everything, you know, just... But, regardless, this is my longest video. And I might, I don't know if I have a longer video than this. Um, I didn't expect it to be this long, but I'm going to be honest with y'all. I felt like I had to suppress this knowledge. Like, so when I first walked into this walk, I was researching like heavy and looking into the history, not just in America, but beyond and looking at certain sources and certain books that I can't name right now, but there's lots of books, a whole lot of books. Let me tell you, there are books. And I mean, these are official historical books <laughs> that contains information which points to a group of people and you could follow them from Portugal to Spain the Moors and, and those that were had Christianity according to the, the the Catholic Church and had that forced on them and or just those that were in West Africa that migrated to West Africa and those that were taken from Negro land where the land of Judah was in and we uh, and and and, and Let me breathe because this has probably been one of the more passionate things that I've been passionate about. And not to say I'm more passionate about this than the winning of lost souls. Because I think Christians get it twisted when I express my care for lost souls. And I'm a fellow Christian. I care for all the lost souls. But there's a group of people that Christians don't care about. There's a group of people that Christians do not care about. And I'm pointing it out. And Donald Trump has been used to expose all these Christians, these conservative Christians that don't care about black people. They don't. They don't at all. They don't care about their black brothers and sisters. They don't. They don't care about us. <laughs> So when I when I and I don't want to incite no racism or no anything because I I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not in a position to be racist. I'm in a position to tell you the truth and point things out that are plain. We are in America. This ain't no kumbaya hold hands and this ain't peaceful. This injustices, equitable injustices, social injustice. Economic injustice. Humane injustice. To just be a human. The moment you mention something, oh, oh we all go through it. We all, yeah, we all go through it, but man, nobody been through what we've been through in this manner. And still dealing with it. Try to point out another group of people that have dealt with this this long in a land that's not theirs. Because last I checked, everybody that was enslaved got their own land now. You know Irish people were enslaved? Don't they have Ireland? Yeah, this is some, you know what I'm saying? But when you, when you start to speak the truth, people hate the truth. And people hate, they don't necessarily hate you, they hate the truth. People hate the truth. People hate when you know the truth. People hate when you research. People hate when you read a book. People hate when you search things for yourself. People hate that. So I never want to be included in a group of people that believe just whatever, anything. No. I believe I'm an Israelite by blood, just like Chinese people are Chinese people by blood. It's like Indian people are Indian people by blood. Just like somebody from Ethiopia is Ethiopian by blood. I am who I am by blood. But when I talk about spiritually, I'm a part of the vine of Christ. That's what I'm a part of the body of Christ. That's what I'm a part of. And it's comprised of many members of many nations of people. Even Deuteronomy 23, 7, I believe it says, do not abhor or hate. 
I have disdain for Egyptian and Esau because he's going to use them in the future generations. And you see what's happening now. There's been an awakening all around the world. There's persecution going on with a lot of Christians. That's how I know that this is real. And this is the type of thing that's pushing us to jealousy. So... It's been sad. It's been a sad thing to wake up to this. It, it's, it's been grievous to my heart. You don't know the tears that I've shed for my people. The tears that I shed riding on the bus going through the east side, looking at the state of my people, feeling in the spirit what's going on in the spirit, the spiritual oppression on our people. You don't know how I feel. Yes, I, and now I've grown to have that for all of the lost souls. I mean, this whole neighborhood, there's lost souls everywhere. However, God wants me to minister to whoever out here on the internet, on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, Twitter or, you know, Instagram or TikTok or, 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 or whatever. I got all that stuff. However, the Most High wants to use me. Rather it's rap music or rather it's getting on this content, rather it's singing, rather it's worshiping him, rather it's serving in the congregation that I'm a part of, which is a mixed congregation. I had to walk on, I'm, I've been walking on eggshells. I told a couple people finally. <laughs> and it's sad because I feel like I shouldn't have to hide who I am. But because of the state of this nation and because the state of the doctrine that's been passed all throughout this nation in the context of who we think the children of Israel are, if you bring about any sort of thing about being the children of Israel, they're going to accuse you of heresy. And just as well as they can consider what I believe heresy, I can consider their claims as heretical as well, according to scripture. I'm not prideful. I don't I'm not here to say I know more than them or know everything or know that I know nothing. I really don't, but I know what I was shared through revelation. And I know it was the most high Yah that did it. Yah did it. Y'all giving me this revelation. He showed me who I am because I, I wanted to know who I was. Before I left the new age, I'm like, man, who are we? Who are we? Like, who am I? We don't know anything before these 400 years. We don't know anything about where we was in Africa. We don't know none of that. We just believe that we was a tribe and another tribe took us and gave us to the white man and then a white man took us. We don't understand the context of the, of, the, of, of the transatlantic slave trade. We don't know who invested into those ships, who invested, who was investors, who else was a part of it, the other nations that conspired, the other nations that got rich off of our blood money, off that cotton, and just, just it's, it's Structures, financial structures have been built off of our labor all around the whole entire planet, this world. So I look at all that and I be like, man, how can no, you can't tell me who I am. There's a couple people that tell them, oh, I'm not no Gentile. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm a Gentile. I'm not trying to have pride about no skin color or nothing. This is nations. This is tribes. Don't call me no Gentile. Don't, uh, uh, the curse of Ham. This ain't no curse of Ham. The curse of Ham is happening to the Hamites right now. We know who the Hamites are. We waking up. And I'm at this point now, and I'm making this video, the porch therapy session, and this is my longest one because I, I, I have to get this off of my chest. Because I'm done. Like I said, I'm done with these porch therapy sessions. I got literally two more videos and I'm done. And this topic right here is something that I've been holding inside and I had nobody to talk to. Nobody to express it to. I bet there's so many Christians right now in so many different churches. Mixed congregations are also in their churches and their communities that, that's holding this in because... You feel like if you bring it up, you might have brought it up. People don't relate to it. People ain't received that revelation. People aren't able to take it in. People can't. And it's okay. It's okay. It's completely okay. It's just somebody needs to go out there. 
in our communities as an Israelite <laughs> but operating out the Ruach operating out of the love of Christ our community needs the love of Christ we don't need to be beat upside the head with the law statutes and commandments and we, we, we just finding out who we are we don't need to be beat with the law we need to understand grace and then learn about the law. We have to entreat them as the Gentiles, as they did in, in, in the book of Acts. We have to entreat them as Gentiles. And allow them to be regrafted into the nation of Israel. We have to truly bring about the gospel. We got to tell them about Christ. And then open up. Uh, yeah, it's nice to know who you are, but we gotta, they gotta know about Christ. It's faith in that that's gonna save us. Our skin color not gonna save us. The law, statutes, and commandments are not going to save us. But. He that do. His commandments will be saved. <laughs> oh, that's confusing to me. Yeah, it is confusing. Well, first you got to have that faith in Christ. Because there's people out here that don't even believe in Christ. That's following God's law, statutes, and commandments. The Pharisees. <laughs> don't allow yourself to be a Pharisee. Understand who Christ is. Understand what Jesus has done. This ain't about no skin color. This is really about... All people, all nations of people, for God so loved the world that he's given his only begotten son for those that believe. You know why those Gentiles back in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in, in Acts, why they, why the Holy Spirit fell upon those Gentiles and why those miracles and wonders was working in those Gentiles that, that Paul was visiting? And, and it's because of their belief. You want to know why Jesus done those wonders for those Gentiles? Because of their belief and faith. You want to know why the Gentiles were grafted in? Because of their faith. In the lack of the faith of the children of Israel. Look at where we are today. But now it's even worse because we don't even have Christ with us. We got a false image of Christ. <laughs> so when we close our eyes and pray to God, that's who we see. And it's so embedded in our minds that... It's messed us up and it's created this psychological trauma that whenever you hear the name Jesus, you see that image, you see slavery, you see the, the, the conquest of the Catholic Church and them taking over lands and murdering other groups of people for the sake of, of their, their religion and their stuff. And they had the cross on their shields and their armor and, and murdering people with the cross in, 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 the, name of, <laughs> in the name of Satan. You got Christians out here that's extremely nasty. You got, we supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. We supposed to be loving. We supposed to be Christ-like. Some people may accuse somebody telling the truth as being hateful. So whatever you think about me, just think it. Because these last couple topics that I spoke about are some of the most controversial topics in the church. When we speak about politics, when we speak about the Israelites, and when we speak about holiness and Jezebel, you know. so I'm not here to throw out the fact that I'm an Israelite and wear it on my sleeve like I'm an Israelite. Ha, I'm better than you and this and that. No. If you read all throughout the Old Testament, our people messed up right now because of the the sins of our ancestors because they were so messed up. <laughs> you know all the stuff King Solomon got into? I'm not even talking about the wise, really. I'm talking about the witchcraft <laughs> and, and, and evil demonic practices and, and things like that. Like Him allowing the other nations and women to stray away from the Most High. Sins of King David. Sins of... 
King Saul. All the most of the kings in Israel were like wicked kings. The kings of Judah, they it got split into Israel and Judah because of the wicked kings, and it was just like because we wanted a man to be a king, and we didn't want God. Like even back then, they said we want a man king, and then he raised up Saul. To mess things up. But God knew what was going to happen. God raises up kings for a reason. And he allows things for a reason. But we needed all that to happen. Because we wouldn't have a king in Christ. And that's a true king. King of all kings. Lord of all lords. The name above all names. So when I, when I look at that. That's who my salvation lies in. That's who I put my trust in. And the most high God has given us a sufficient sacrifice for that. The most high God. <laughs> the savior of our souls Yahuwah The creator of the heavens and earth Is with you He's with me If you're a Christian and you're watching this I, I will hope That you just don't think that I'm just Some radical Israelite Out here throwing out Radical Israelite stuff I'm not here to prove anything I, This is porch therapy sessions I'm getting things off of my chest. That's what I'm doing. And as you can see, this is the longest video because this is one of the more deeper topics that I've been silent about since I started going to church. Because people don't relate to this revelation. Because everybody haven't received this revelation. Everybody that are Christians don't believe in biblical holiness. And this is why I appreciate the shepherd that I have that believes in biblical holiness, believes in... Following the scriptures that believes in God's laws, his holy law, that we should delight in them, that we should delight in his precepts. And I don't mean as a Pharisee, but I mean by the spirit. Have I made mistakes? Have I slipped? Have I stumbled? Yes, because I'm in the beginning of my walk and that's no excuse, you know, but man, we all make mistakes. We got to stop walking out here thinking we perfect. And when we walk in this Israelitism, we, we try to be perfect, not knowing that we can't be perfect, but we are to be perfected. There's a difference. Be perfect as he is perfect. And that's a perfect heart. We have to have a perfect heart. That doesn't mean how we move is perfect. There's going to be some curvatures. There's going to be some... But in this walk, we are to be sanctified continually. We are to continually grow. We are to continually grow in holiness. We are to continually grow in his word. We are to continually grow. We are to strive. It says strive towards the narrow path. Strive. This ain't, oh, I walk into the faith, snap, I'm holy. No. We strive. We have that perfect heart towards God. But the perfected work in Christ is being perfected in us to perfect us. We can be perfect right now in our hearts towards the Most High. And that don't mean we live without sin. But that means that we sin less and less and less. We have to have a repentant heart and move forward. But we have to have a standard of holiness. We have to have a standard of God's law, statutes, and commandments. And we can guard those by the Spirit. But we have to be guarded. We need the spiritual armor on. We need the shield of faith. We need the sword of the Spirit. And best believe we can slice them demons. Whatever fiery dart the enemy throws. And we have our armor on. Nothing can little try to. Not, nothing going to watch. Let us walk together as a platoon. As a people. And I don't mean just black people. I mean Israelites. And I don't mean by blood simply. I mean spiritual Israel. Us coming together. I mean us of the bloodline of Israel coming back to our God and crying out to our God. And I mean those that are of the Gentile nations, the other nations, being grafted in to the nation of Israel. Kodeshim set apart for God's great purposes. So... Whomever you are, like, like I said, I come, I come here with the love of Christ and all these. You might think like a lot of stuff that I was speaking about and that I was saying, you know, just don't don't take what I say and run with it. Research, research, go into the scripture, research. 
And somebody that I will suggest you watch. And I don't I don't be out here suggesting people. Pastor Stephen Darby from Destin Ministries. S T E P H E N Darby D A R B Y. Pastor Darby. Destin Ministries. He has many videos on this awakening. Who are we? Racial lies told in the Bible. The prophecy. The black woman's secret love. There's so many titles. You can you can go forth and, and, and just watch them joints. And understand who you are. And he's going to give you more scripture and research. I point you to him because... He was the first pastor I started watching because I literally was almost one of those radical black Hebrew Israelites that spewed out hatred and said other nations and people are going to hell. And I don't believe in that. But Pastor Stephen Darby is a Christian or was a Christian. He passed away uh, several years ago. But he was a Christian. But acknowledged the Israelite blood. But his foundation was in Christ. It wasn't in being an Israelite. And I believe that he's somebody that can give you this revelation and balance as a Christian. But also holding fast to being an Israelite. Because I believe one should never conflict with the other. It shouldn't. It should never. But regardless, <laughs> I hope that this message has been a blessing to you. I got to tend to my own life. I've been out here an hour and a half, man. But... I needed to get this off of my chest. I needed to speak about this. Uh, I'm thankful for the most high, you know, just, you know, I usually don't even pray um, after these, but I just got to pray right now because this one is very much different, but it's still a porch therapy session. And this is some of the deepest therapy that I've had. But this, this is a big revelation for anybody to walk into. It's not easy. And if you're walking into this revelation for the first time in your life and you watch this video all the way through. Don't take what I'm saying and run with it. No, take what I'm saying as a sign of God of showing you who you are. But also, do your research. Look into this yourself. And for those that are Christian that may not agree with what I'm saying, Let's disagree to disagree and I still love you. You love me. That's that. Because I'm not here to argue with nobody. I'm not here to prove anything to anybody. I've seen too many. I watched hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos on Israelites arguing with Christians. <laughs> Israelites arguing with Christians. Christians arguing with... And, and it really be the Christians that be antagonizing the Israelites. I see it. Christians antagonizing Israelites starting quarrelings and starting fights and you know as a Christian that is against a lot of the things that Paul has said inspired by the Holy Spirit so I come to you with the love of Christ I come to you with the truth and once again this is revelation I receive from God let's agree to disagree I have no time to argue you have no time to argue we got to go out here and win these souls. We got to go out here and win these souls. We can't, we, can't, we can't be out here fighting amongst one another. Like, regardless if we call him Jesus or right, we call him Yahusha. Ultimately, the image of Caesar Borgia, that's not Jesus. We all should know that. Like, regardless Christian or not, we should know that. Nation or whatever, like, like we shouldn't be arguing about this. If you don't know, you don't know. Whatever. We should be winning souls for the kingdom. But if they don't know what they're being grafted into. If they're being grafted into just being a Christian. Or are they being grafted into a holy nation. That God has comprised of all nations. But it started in the house of Israel. And the Gentiles were grafted into that promise. That is the new covenant. Through the bloodshed of Jesus Christ. We got to tell people the good news, but we got to give it to them. Gentiles and Jews alike and Israelites alike. We have to give them this good news. We got to stop throwing the law at people. But we also got to stop throwing grace at people with lawlessness. Where you walk into this faith and, and, 
and just live the life that you want. There's no repentance. There's, there, there's, there's no remission of sins if there's no repentance. There's no turning away from sin, but it's living sinful, lascivious lives as Christians that makes our witness look bad. So ultimately, we got to stop fighting with one another. There's so much going on, we got to edify one another. How can we edify one another if we are literally two different nations in one nation, <laughs> supposedly? The body of Christ is one body. In the moment that we get that through our thick skulls, Christians and Israelites, that's when we can truly come together as a whole. But we have to come together in the righteousness of the Most High God through Jesus Christ. We can't come through the righteousness of the Pharisees because that righteousness ain't going to get us nowhere. <sighs> and we can't ride off the coattails of grace with no transformation, with no transformation, with no holy standard, with no law at all, just lawlessness. We can't do that. So I will hope that you do not mix me in with this group of Christian and with this group of Israelites. I'm called a shim. We are called to be set apart. Forget a name, forget a title, forget anything. Because these names, titles, and everything is what separates us as well. Who is set apart? We got to operate by them scriptures and not by our, our feelings, by our emotions, by the color of our skin. That's the biggest thing for me, you know, so once again, <laughs> whatever you think after this, whatever conclusions you come up with, you're going to come up with it. I've heard enough. That don't matter. But you know what? When we look at end time prophecy, I believe it does matter. It matters very much. It matters a whole lot, actually. It matters so much. It don't make no sense. And don't matter according to salvation. It matters according to eschatology in the context of who the people of Israel are. And this all will determine the end time events. So eventually we're going to know the truth regardless. And God's going to continue to reveal it. I'm just a person. But regardless, I don't just serve to for a skin color I serve because there's lost souls and there's people going to hell every day by droves and God is calling us to speak to people and preach to people the righteousness of Christ telling the good news about Christ and even if they don't receive it right then and there we planted a seed to open them up for the next thing and God is going to continue to do the work that God's going to do and our issue as Christians is, is that we would try to be God we would want to transform somebody's life right away the moment that we give them the gospel the moment that we tell them the good news and the moment that we throw oh this is who you are and these are the laws that we should be following just immediately before even telling them about Christ we tell, we giving them the law. Ah. <laughs> you know, I got enough. I'm done. I got to make dinner and I'm hungry. So once again, I hope this video is blessing you. I hope it blessed you. I got to pray because this is a lot. It's a lot in this. So well, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for just giving me the grace to be able to come out here and speak. I was extremely tired and had no energy before this, but something in me right now, I'm just fired up. Not just for the Israelites and the lost tribes all around the world, but Heavenly Father, for lost souls of all nations, Heavenly Father. I'm thankful that my heart for the Gentiles, other races of people, other groups of people, I'm glad that my heart for them and for their souls have have increased Heavenly Father. I'm glad that my love for all people have increased Heavenly Father. I'm glad that you've allowed me to just be able to grow in, in just the love of Christ Heavenly Father. Grow in the fruits of the Spirit. I'm thankful. I pray that the viewer of this video don't look at me as just some maniac that's throwing out conspiracies. But I pray that their hearts are open to really receive what I'm saying in a heart of love for the truth and for the ways of the Most High and for us to get back to His ways. and. Just for a desolate community on just the east side of Buffalo, but not just the east side of Buffalo. I mean, there's people I know on the west side of Buffalo, like I said, just in our community. And just also just black communities all around the country. You know, those that are lost, those that are dealing with pain, those that are in prison, and those that are 
feeling like there's nothing out there for them like where we have to depend on politics and have to depend on culture and have to depend on other other ways of living that isn't profitable for our lives and and that are that isn't fruitful but i pray that we can truly trust in you yeah i tr I, I, I just i just want us to trust in you yeah i'm just praying right now that each and every soul under the sound of my voice rather white black rather chinese indian uh, from wherever they from rather from africa rather european whatever asian nation hispanic or just whatever nation they're from heavenly father i just want to pray heavenly father that they're able to receive this message and i pray that they can receive it in the balance um i pray that people's eyes and hearts can open up to have compassion on our community of people yes son oh well well um, Stone something from church. Okay. Well, I'll I'll deal with it in a second. I'm in the middle of prayer. Hallelujah. I just want to pray for my daughter right now. She stole something, and we know that's a sin against you, Heavenly Father. And uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna deal with that in a second. My Heavenly Father, I just pray that you bless the ears to hear this message and bless their hearts. <laughs> Open them up to this revelation and give them strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo. All right. Well, I'm done. So, I've been on this long enough. God bless. Woo -woo.